I think you're chasing your real self and your stand-up self. I think you'll always be behind. Mm. Like, I don't think I started to feel like myself on stage until seven years in. Remember, I said, I'm never going to repeat material. It's like, well, stand-up is repetition of material if you're trying to write a joke that stands the test of time. Mm. Essentially, it's a trick and it's acting, and you have to do that many times to, to get it right. You have to be careful, of course, what you've chosen as your material and what you continually say because whether it's positive or negative, I guess the word I'm saying is like a daily affirmation. Mm. So if your set is, I'm a piece of shit, I'm so poor, right. I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor. I live on a air mattress, air mattress, air mattress. I have no money. You know, it's like, I think maybe you're going to stay that way. Are you sure you want to post that? It's going to be online forever. Today we're blessed, we're best by <laughs> a legendary comedian, fellow daddy issue sufferer, but we're not dwelling on that, Beth Stelling. <laughs> <laughs> so fun to be here. Thank you for having me. Such, Truly such an honor. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for inviting me. Yes. Thank you for keeping our <laughs> reputation for only having curly heads. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, we really are looking great with our curls. We look like a Pantene commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Hire us. We're package only. I don't know what the job is. <laughs> Please hire me. Yeah, the, I don't know what the job is, but do hire us three as a package for curly hair. Please. For your needs. Please, please, please. It's for Kotex tampons. Yeah, I would do that. I'm not, <laughs> Although I'm not a tampon gal, really. Really? Yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah, sure. Right away. I love Are you a pad just... girl? I am a pad person. What the hell? You I little know. baby okay. in a diaper. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I think. And I've actually been transitioning to... Uh, period underwear. However, oh, nice. Yes. You do so think? I guess what the thinks? Yeah. Yep. I guess my reasoning is, and I'm, and I've, I have the only other time I've discussed this was on another podcast. Was on Endless Honeymoon with Natasha and Moshe, and ever, everyone, of course, has so much to say about this. But I believe that when you wear a pad or period underwear, it gets it over with quicker. Mm, and a tampon is sending a message to your body that's like, "Plug it up, stop this mess." I couldn't agree more. I feel like the blood we're supposed to be shedding yeah, it can. out. We're supposed to be in a tent the whole weekend. Honestly, <laughs> seriously, mine only falls on a weekend. I don't know how I do it, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, I that's how I feel too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Why would we want it to be stuck inside? Yeah. Even the diva cup, like I got it, no shade, but I cup, just, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it feels the cleanest, the easiest, the simplest, yeah. no thank you. I've tried it. Yeah. I tried it and I was so happy. I decided to try it. Um, I was on a little trip with my field hockey team. We played a tournament in Germany. <laughs> oh and, my God. That's a okay. She international. I, I did decide to try it then, which seems insane. But in my mind, I was like, well, you don't have to pack anything. Mm. Right. Um, and I was like, this is incredible. I was feeling it all day. We were walking around Amsterdam in, in a, um, mu or, yeah, it's called a museum. I was like, me. <laughs> <"Nee." laughs> uh, we were in a museum. And then on the way home, things started to go a rock. You know, it felt like <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh oh. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as when I got home, it hurt so badly to pull out. It's oh. almost like I was like cramping. It didn't make oh. sense. Your body was something went rejecting. Off. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then because in fine, walking around fine, and then all of a sudden it's almost just like it like a cupping. Seized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something happened. Mm -hmm. And that's the last time. Um, that happened to me. Your pussy has opinions. Yeah. And you're listening. Yeah. And that's healthy. Invite only. <laughs> <laughs> I was using a, a cup when I was um, harvesting my my blood. Spawn? Oh. For what? Oh, you were harvesting? I was harvesting. It. Like, I was blood? <laughs> yeah. Cool. What's that about? Right? Um, There's been a lot of options. <laughs> yeah. You can go a lot of different for, directions. Like, a facial back on your... <laughs> I did. I I did do that a little bit. I was like, this is <laughs> problematic, and I don't do this anymore. I do not recommend this. But I was like adding a little drops to my smoothie. Why of your period blood? Why was I doing that? I'm sorry to yell into the mic. No, please do. Wait a minute. I know it was like 2016. It was a different time. Okay. Yeah. But was that on? Was that sort of a hunch you had on your own, or was that something you read about? It's called reverse aging, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely think. Uh, Nobody's like even looking down. Some women right. are scared to look down. I, like, yeah. I don't know what's going down down there, but it's like a pixelated mask. They yeah. couldn't pick out their own p in a lineup. Wow. Right. That's dark. We should do a YouTube video of that. For YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> For OnlyFans. I've, you look over. I've already started unbuttoning my pants. <laughs> yes. Let's do Have it. Have you ever made a tape bath? 
Yeah. You have? Oh. Yeah. What do you, you think? Did you like it? I do like them. I <laughs> like making them with, uh, obvi- well, not obviously. With random strangers. With, I, 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 <laughs> no. I was going to say my dad. But, uh, <laughs> no. So a random stranger. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> no, I do like making them with uh, partners. Mm-hmm. And that is just usually what I put, pr- what? Sorry, our uh, friend in the made studio just made a statement. Oh, okay, okay. why we asked, but okay, we're, sh- okay. we're shaming him with our eyes. Okay, it's okay. Fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that wasn't daggers this time. <laughs> um, like, okay, so. So, yes, I do like making them. I That's something that I would prefer to watch if I were uh, self-pleasing as opposed to strangers. Mm. Or, mm-hmm. So, it's like, um, yeah, I like watching the me and the person I I am attracted to. So when you were starting out, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but 17 years ago? Yes. Insane. 17 Love that. years ago. I was just one year old. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't know if you started in open mics or what. but Yeah, in Chicago. In Chicago. Yeah. It, Did you experience a lot of men coming up and giving you unsolicited advice after? I got some two weeks ago. Oh, oh my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always be like, hey, can I give you a tag? And I say, I a tag. don't need it. Like a tag for one of my jokes. Or like, what if you did this? And it's like, and I said, and I what said, if I did this. I, I said, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can I give you a tap across your face really hard? <laughs> no. Um, I said no, but he said it anyway. Right. And uh, the truth is, I don't, I don't think I needed to explain it to him afterwards, but I was basically like, yeah, I mean, I've, I've tried that. I've thought of different things. Mm-hmm. But usually if you've thought of it, it's not good enough. It's my job to probably think of something for a really long time since I'm presenting it to the crowd. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to just say the first thought like an, like you would at work. <laughs> like right now. Or right now. <laughs> or, you know, like that's what that's how I see a comic. Mm. Comic's job is to not just think of the first thing, but. Mull it over. Yeah. Yes. Look at it from diff- multiple angles. Yes. So, yeah. What was it? Uh, what, what is it like having done it for 17 years as opposed to when you were first starting out? Like what kind of stuff was coming out? Like do you feel like you were processing at the beginning? I don't know. Does that question make sense? Yeah, I think like, um, yeah, and, and I, we've said this, right? People know we're talking about stand-up comedy. Just we are checking. talking about stand-up. Yeah, I just, you know, not, not, I, no one knows who I am. And I just want to make sure we, <laughs> in what we're world? talking about stand-up comedy. In, 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 in here, you, we The fact that your Instagram is smaller than mine is like what makes me believe that reality is not real. I'm like, <laughs> this woman deserves, <laughs> That's uh, she's a legend. This makes Thank no you. sense, but Thank anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm like, okay, so to answer your question, Early days, I think I was a little. Uh, my my mindset was this: I per I like to be in the moment. I like to be. We've received a message. <laughs> I like to be. Um, the angels are calling. Authentic, mm. and so I had these little rules for myself when I first started, which was like, I'll never repeat a joke. I'll never take a set list on stage, and I won't sleep with comics. That's like what I said Genius. in 07 when I was starting, and then of course. I kept the not sleep with comics for a long time. Yeah. And then didn't. But, you know, uh, <laughs> set list kind of flew out the window with nerves. Like, yeah. I, th- I started to sort of just excuse that because there is, there's all, everything has changed so drastically in the last five to 10 years with stand up and comedy in general. But there was a sense of pride with not having a set list. Mm-hmm. In fact, mm. I remember headlining after I did my Comedy Central half hour in 20. 20- 15 and I was starting new and I was still learning how to do that. Like there's so many steps to stand up. It's like, you know, open mic two to five minutes. Then you make it on a showcase show, which is 12 to 15 minutes. And then you're trying to build more and more time to get a half hour. And then you, wow, you've gotten a half hour on comedy central. Now you're, there's just, now you're working towards an hour. So I was still learning what that looks like, you know, Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the club scene, you'll come up as a host, then get bu- moved to feature, which is the middle act that's longer, and then you're trying to headline. And I, I, I guess all that to say, when I was headlining in the early days, I did have this mentality of like going into battle. Like I have to prove myself, these people don't like me, they don't know who I am. Like you gotta be tough and just get through it. Like I wasn't finding the joy as much, it was like, there were so many rumors about women who would come before me on the road, like, oh, she couldn't even do 30, or I blew her out of the water. And sometimes if the middle feature guy was a guy, he was trying to bury me. Like, mm-hmm. he was going as hard as he can. 
And I've had moments too where if I'm rebuilding my hour, my of course my feature is very strong. I don't have the feelings now where I'm like worried to follow them because like thankfully my fan base has has turned the tide into people who have actually come to see me. Mm -hmm. Whereas early days of headline, you're looking out in the crowd and they might not know who you are. They just walked in off the street. Um, Eliza Schlesinger canceled and they booked me instead. And that those two don't. That's not my crowd necessarily. So that's happened to me. I'm talking like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But like um, as time goes on and you gain fans, like even my Netflix half hour in 2017, that's like if, if collecting fans is drops in a bucket, sometimes like that will be like a big pour. Mm -hmm. So then you start to feel the tide turn and more people are on your side. But there'll be – a crowd is is it is its own thing. Mm -hmm. So if if not everybody's on your side, the people who are like, what is this? <laughs> can infiltrate the so anyway you're you're trying to build a group of people who like what you say and like your perspective so they're there for it they're there for the ride this is the longest answer ever and i'm so sorry i'm eating it up okay <laughs> the point is i think what i'm getting at is when i was rebuilding in the early days I, instead of padding my set like hey guys like i learned this from from neighbor gatsy it would be like i'm rebuilding hey, thanks so much for coming out i'm going to do as much new as i can and when I'm done, I'll play the hits. So they still get a good show. Mm. I am very like, well, that's over. Scratch. I'm going to try all the new. And people were like, <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> so now I've learned that I do have, you know, you still have to put on a solid show no matter where you are in this process mm -hmm. of, of building an hour. And then, like I said, things have changed so much. Like, I don't know who's building an hour anymore. Because even some of our mm. heavy hitters, if you look at the time codes on Netflix – are 34 to 45 minutes. Mm. Those are their specials. I mean, they're used to, speaking of a sense of pride with no set list, that used to be a sense of pride. Mm -hmm. My hour, I've held your attention for an hour. I crafted a, what's it called? A special. <laughs> Something <laughs> special for you. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm totally like a relic at this point of stand up, it feels like. Like I'm just sort of, I, I don't even, I don't know. Holding to these standards. Yeah, yeah. That I, part of me goes, why did, when I, I self-produced my last Netflix special that's out now, it's called If You Didn't Want Me Then. And it's so good. Thank you. Um, but that's an hour, if not a little over. And it's like, wait, I could have saved 15 minutes of that, got paid the same amount to license <laughs> it that they did, or they probably got more. And <laughs> and then I have that 15 for my next. It's just sort of like, mm -hmm. I'm a bad businesswoman, you know? Anyway, sorry, there, there, I, I can talk about these, these things forever. I'm a... Comedy, There's something to be nerd. said for having dignity, okay? Yes. <laughs> it, yes. it Maybe it doesn't pay as well as, yeah, yeah. you know, like catering to people's fucking TikTok ass attention spans. Yeah. But no, I mean, I think that that's a commitment to the craft is is be a beautiful thing. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm like, at this point, I don't know what's next because things have changed so much. I have a new hour, but it's a matter of am I producing it myself again? Mm. Like. It, the real I don't know how much we want to get into the details of all this. Yeah, what is the process junk. of producing your own special for Netflix? Um, okay, so I did what it is called, like, which is very popular now. Um, and it's not in every case. Like some people, you know, some of their bigger names, they they will have like a anywhere from whatever, one million to twelve million dollar deal with this comic. And that comic provides them with wow. one, two, three, however many specials over this many years. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously still happening, not for me. Um what I did is put my own money into um, filming the end of my tour in 2022. I was it was my hometown theater mm -hmm. that I used to like go to for you know uh, field trips and stuff. As oh my a kid. god! And I normally don't do a big venue for a special. I just like feeling small with everybody, like intimate. But it's a choice. It's it's sort of meant to sort of. Um, what am I trying to say? When you picture something like. Um, like visualization. Thank you. Yeah, visualization <laughs> of like, this is how many fans I have, you know? Mm. It's like a, it's just a different sort of approach to it, like mm. a splashier approach. Mm -hmm. And that's theater seats mm. 1,200. But the truth is, like, I really didn't think I could sell it twice. Mm. So typically, these guys who have these bigger deals and some of these women who have these bigger deals would do anywhere from two to eight to 12, however many they want, tapings, and then edit that together and here's my special. I just sold it once, taped it once. It, wow. That's what that is. <laughs> so I then edited it for way too long. On a personal note, that special was just 
at a time in my life where I was, sort of, I was dating somebody who was really struggling with certain things that were mm -hmm. affecting our intimacy and our relationship. And it was not great personally. I was writing on Rick and Morty season eight and touring like 26 cities. So that was the end of that. It's like my, I had to get my draft in. I filmed it on a Saturday. I think I broke up with them a couple of weeks later. And so when the edit time comes, and this is something oh. I remember um, <laughs> Pete Holmes was saying when I was writing on Crashing, this is like years ago, cause I wasn't sure if I wanted to do like a Colbert set while I was there that summer. I was like, again, probably in a low space. Like I was, I was dating somebody who was kind of giving me a hard time about what I ate. This is a different oh. way. And so I was not feeling good about myself. Mm -hmm. And I remember Pete was just like, these sets, especially like that, like a Colbert or a Conan are like a little time capsule of who you are. Mm. Oh, and God. if you don't want that capsule, then don't do it. Wow. But this was, <laughs> you can't stop the train of an hour uh, special planned. So when it came time to edit it, I was extremely yeah. harsh on myself. Yeah. And I almost just scratched it. Mm -hmm. Like I almost was like, I'll eat the money that I put into this. And to answer your question, details being it's Dayton, Ohio, so there isn't like a local crew. Mm -hmm. So I'm paying for and paying properly, like um, union wages, to bring in an entire crew to film it, um, <laughs> put them up. <laughs> Thankfully, again, it was just one show, but I needed to fly them in the night before. Mm. So anyway, those are the costs that go into yeah. it and um, other things, licensing, insurance, things like that. And then cut to the end Mo Welch is one of my best friends. She directed it and had to sort of like deal with me throughout the editing process. Mm. I kind of ran up a tab there, again, my own money. So I shouldn't have spent as much as I did, but I was like, I hate this. This is bad. You know, it's just very nitpicky. Very familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I was very much like, "Who? this is terrible. Let's not put it out. And she was like, please seek treatment. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and you know, and then li licensed it to Netflix, which means they wrote me a check and they will have it on their platform for, th I forget what my deal is, two years. And then in the deal, they have the option to, um, you know, license it again and give me another check for five years. Oh, they, oh, they don't keep it on discount. just like forever? Mm -mm. Wow. So the benefit to all of this of me rambling is I own that. Oh, so okay. I – even though I made the least amount of money on that special I've made ever on a special, I could in its lifetime make more than I've ever made mm -hmm. on a special. If right. people, if maybe I licensed it to United Airlines or um, Ameri uh, Amazon or whatever. Wow. wow, that is so interesting. Yeah, so that's that. That so that is the. I guess you know. I say I'm not a good businesswoman, but that is a step. No, you towards, are. Uh, being Thank you so much for this information. Yeah. Like, I can feel both of us just sponging yeah. it up right now. Yeah. I feel like people kind of gatekeep some like information about like how yeah. they've done what they've done. I'm always very open with my numbers and everything too. Like if someone's asking me how much you got paid to headline here because they want to mm -hmm. know what they should ask for. I yeah, do. very important. Not talking about money is bougie shit. I feel like that's like bougie culture, like rich people culture. I'm just like, just talk about it. That's my feelings anyway. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I think too, it's just... Sometimes it can be a bummer to hear. Like I've, yeah. it's a hit to your ego sometimes. Mm. I've been on the same festival with people. You know, sometimes mm, right, they'll like, say it's what they call favored nations. If you ever uh -huh. get an offer for like a festival or something like that, I, mean, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it means that hey, everybody's getting paid the same because they don't want to deal with nice. yeah. comics egos or agents leveraging mm. other. You think comics. everyone would just do that? Because otherwise, yeah. like Matt Rife got paid how much from Netflix? <laughs> yeah, the hell, you know. <laughs> yeah, I just Jerry Seinfeld made seventy. Yeah. Million Shocking from the Pop Tart movie. Shocking amount. Seventy million. Didn't yeah. see it. My parents. Sometimes liked when it. I work yeah. for famous people, I am like I'll be, you know, like and by that I mean, you know, writing on a television show or we're in I've been in a Zoom and been been looking at the person and in my head I'm going, What if he just bought me a house? What if he bought <laughs> just me a one? House? Right. You know, I feel like it would just house. like they might not even know the money was missing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they <laughs> won't. <laughs> They won't. They're like business or account manager might not. Yeah, they yeah. might not. They might know, but <laughs> but yeah. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy game, and then, and then also there's variables about promoting it and um, whether or not it like blows up and who's in charge of that and mm. are you paying to play basically? Are you paying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for PR, which I didn't want to do. And another thing about the Netflix licensing is they're very clear that they won't be promoting it. Mm. So, like, mm. 
you know, that's tough too because I don't know how I did it, but it, my special got in the top 10 that first week. It didn't stay long. But, you know, they were like, great job. That's incredible. You self-produce this and it's in the top 10. But it's like, but then it didn't like, you know, go viral or mm -hmm. like it didn't stay there. And then you just go, well, I don't, am I beating up on myself for that? I don't, I don't know. But I also didn't pay for PR and that, cause it's just so expensive and I mm -hmm. don't come from money. It's really hard for me to justify blowing mm -hmm. that amount of money. Yeah. I've seen it work and I've seen it not work. Yeah. I've seen, you know, people hire PR um, to promote their television show that's coming out. And they're very talented and nothing kind of comes from it. Mm -hmm. They're just, they just are 18 grand in the hole. Um, but spending money to nitpick yourself. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll treat myself. That's like worth that. all the money. Yeah. The world. <laughs> I feel um, like a lot of times virality does not equal longevity, you know? That's true. So, like, if something explodes, yeah. it might just be that, that one firework. True. And I was listening to, um, my friend sent me the, I think it's the Script Notes podcast, and they were kind of mentioning that, like, you know, our industry, the entertainment industry, television writing and, and film is in a very strange period. There's a lot of doom and gloom talk happening right now, post mm. Writers Guild and SAG after strike. Um, but to your point, they were discuss discussing the idea of um, eyes on something and virality and having an audience. So mm. mm -hmm. I guess, like, you know, so the thing that um, I do take pride in is building an audience that I care about, that cares about me. Yeah. And I'm really grateful for that. Like, one of my greatest senses of pride is, like, leaving the comedy club and after the weekend, the staff, the, the waiters and waitresses, and say, like, your crowd rules are so kind. You know, and it's like, that feels great to know that my people are coming and not destroying property or being <laughs> rude or not tipping or whatever. And that's on an Ohio fan base. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. your, your mom was a school teacher? Mm -hmm. Do, how does she feel about um, your impression of her? She likes it. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. Yeah. She, or she's, I should say she's not opposed to it. I think she enjoys um, the attention a little. Uh -huh. She's certainly not a ham. Um <laughs> But, you know, I, th I would say early days, her biggest problem with my stand-up was, was just, um, like, she would say things like, just be nice to yourself, okay? Because I had a lot of, like, I was chubbier. Um, I'm 5'9", so, like, I was probably, I was closer to 200 pounds. And it's, like, on a, on a frame that's tall, it's kind of, like, nothing. I look back and I'm just, like, you know, chubby baby type face and curvy body. But I had, of course, I was, what? I'm trying to think when I started. 22 or something I was making jokes about myself and my weight and um so that was the source of that mm. and speaking of the the little rules I set I also was like and I'm not going to talk about sex oh interesting um and I would try not to cuss as well it didn't mean uh -huh. I, I wasn't I, I I'm not the comic that's like I used to be Christian but now I'm a whore you know what I mean? <laughs> it, but I was I had I did have that judgment for sure of myself because I didn't want to be a stereotype it did make me feel a little cringe when I would go to open mics and see women be yeah. more um, exhibitionist. Mm -hmm. It bothered me. Yep. Um, I was bummed by it. And, um, yeah, my mom would be like, but Bob Newhart didn't have to cuss. You know, I'm like, <laughs> Bob, <laughs> do it Bob for Bob. <laughs> like he's my idol or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so I had those judge judgments of myself for sure when I started and like little rules about that. Mm -hmm. The tide turned for me after my Netflix half hour. Because again, I'm not like some sort of squeaky clean comic at all. But I had all this stuff on my mind about sex, about relationships. And I was like stopping myself. Mm -hmm. And I just said, screw it. Like when you, when you have a voice that you've developed and you have an opinion and um, you want to get it out and say something. And to be honest with you, a lot of mine has turned into wanting to be more helpful uh, to people and open up conversations about intimacy and um, and that to me and consent and sex and all those things. Like I still get trolled by like um, old white men on Facebook and they'll be like, another comedian that's a female talking about sex. And I usually reply like, what is up this is that? actually about consent. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe look into it. It's like, because men never talk about sex. Yeah. What? Well, that's the thing. I mean, I was on a show the other night. I was the only woman. And yeah, it was very much like, 
Sex, sex, sex. Right. Everybody was talking about it. So, right. Again, of course, it's like the deepest source of our cultural shame. Like, yeah. yeah, there's a lot to be said about it. And it's funny and weird and gross. Like, yeah. it makes sense that you would want to talk about it. As long, you know, and, and I think, too, I'm like, the only requirement is requirement is loose because there's no rules in stand-up and there's no HR and anybody can do it. That's kind of the problem with some of our problems. <laughs> That's the issue. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, as long as the, you're making it funny, mm-hmm. like if people are laughing, mm-hmm. then you've done your job. Um, but yeah, I think, like I said, I was de- I was certainly harsher on, on, on people and women when I first started because the story would be like, and I'm certainly simplifying but would be like I ha- got fucked in the ass <laughs> and the big reveal is there was shit everywhere <laughs> you know and you're sitting there at the open mic like all right <sighs> talking about know. poopy anal again yeah, you know <laughs> so it's just sort of like I want more jokes I want mm-hmm. I want your take I want like a hard stance on something but I, I just started doing stand-up this year, and I'm like... Congratulations. Thank you. It's very, <laughs> very interesting process. But yeah, like, I'm noticing this almost like... It's like my younger self, like, still seeking to... I don't know. Yeah, get... Not validation, but, like, just, like, this exhibitionist almost that still lives in me that's, like, wanting these... To, like, expose myself, you know? Okay. And I feel like I'm kind of growing out of those things as, like, a person because I'm fine with my life now or yeah. becoming fine with my life. So I'm like, what is the new voice that's going to come after, you know, I get all of this like weird garbage out. Like, I don't know, but it's yeah. exciting to like see. I think your stand up self is, um, I think, I think you're chasing your real self and your stand up self. I think you'll always be behind. Mm. Um, like, I don't think I started to feel like myself on stage until seven years in. Mm. And, that's that is that can be the trouble with stand up. It is remember I said I'm never gonna repeat material. It's like, well, stand up is repetition of material if you're trying to write a joke that stands the test of time mm-hmm. that you can tell over and over. You keep adding and developing and being in the moment in different ways, but mm-hmm. essentially it's a trick and it's acting and you're making a joke, you know, and you have to do that many times to to get it right. You know, I always use the metaphor of just like, you know, stones on the beach and the wa- the waves are your sets and you're smoothing them out until they're mm. little gems, you know? But you have to be careful, of course, what you've chosen as your material and what you continually say because that is a... It is being set in stone. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a... Um, whether it's positive or negative, I guess the word I'm saying is like a a- daily affirmation. Mm. So if your set is... And I saw this all the time in Chicago... Oh, I'm a piece of shit. I'm so poor. Right. I'm poor. I'm poor. I'm poor. I'm poor. I live on a air mattress, air mattress, air mattress. I have no money. You know, it's like, <laughs> what happened? I think maybe you're going to stay that way. Right. You know, it does infiltrate. It's just like if you woke up every day in the mirror and you were like, you're a piece of shit instead of like, you're the shit. Yeah. So it doesn't mean you go out there and be something you're not, but you got to be careful about what you're choosing mm-hmm. to repeat all the time mm-hmm. or whenever you're doing a set. And then, you know, sorry, this is turning into a little t- stand-up TED Talk for you. No, please. <laughs> but, um, you know, your words are a magnet. Mm-hmm. So what you're putting out there is going to attract certain things. So I've had plenty of comics and sometimes musicians I know too look out in the crowd and go, I don't like these people. <laughs> and it's like, guess where they came from? Right. Your mouth. Yep. Wow. So it's like if you want, you know, a certain crowd, the, again, it the, the doesn't mean cater to – anything else but it means like being authentic and feeling good about what you are saying and, mm-hmm. and knowing what that might attract I it's it's such a spiritual process it's like not what I was expecting at all yeah it's, <laughs> it's hard to figure yourself out mm-hmm. um I didn't watch a lot of stand-up ever and especially when I started I was so scared of stealing it's either oh. joke I mean not because that's um I have an inclination to, but because I just was worried that I would. You were very boundary too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm not going to watch stand up, and I and more worried about stealing some sort of persona or mm-hmm. a way to say things. Mm. I mean, I've seen comics doing it for years, and I'll be watching them, and, I, and I'll think, that's Ali Wong. Like you're doing, oh. like you know, like, and it's not even necessarily a huge knock, but it's they. Robin Williams always used to sort of get. Um, I don't know what the word would be, but sort of called out for that, being a bit of a sponge on things. Hmm. So it doesn't mean you're untalented. It doesn't mean anything. It's just like, you know, uh, 
trying to figure out what what frequency you. you're on. Yeah, yeah. Because I've changed over time. I mean, if you ever need hope, just watch my 2012 <laughs> Conan set. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then that's even a matter of that was my first time on TV. You can't, you don't, you don't, you can't train for TV other than doing it. So your reps are the one times you're seeing yourself God. on TV. And wow. I didn't know how to tell them how to do my hair. And I don't think it looks bad. I just said up and it looks like prom. But you know what I mean? Like <laughs> there's certain things. Like I didn't have that. This is the joy of getting older. Yeah. I didn't have that within me to go, oh, I don't like that. Or this is where I want to be. Or can I start here? Or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just sort of like trying to be, you know, rule follower, people pleaser, good girl. Mm -hmm. Show up and like, I'm just happy to be here. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. Ah, oh, stand up. It is a very spiritual process. So is this podcast, truly. It really, yeah. When you were talking about like going back and editing things. Yeah. It is really hard to, you know, we, we both come from adult industry, especially from like um, content, I guess. And yeah. going back and editing that, I'm like, whatever. Okay. Like I'm getting railed. Who cares? I look good. I just don't really like think about it the same way. And and are you in that sort of editing process, or you have been, or it just depends on the project? You if mean? it was like a mainstream scene, we have no control whatsoever. Okay. But we mainly did our own content, so we did have control over editing. That's cool. Um, yeah, but with this, <clears throat> it's way more vulnerable and like interesting. I'm way more critical. <laughs> it's like I don't know. Five. Ten. Um, five till what? The end? Ten. Ten till the end. Oh, wow. Ten till the end. Um, <laughs> That is interesting. I mean, it's sort of just like, it's an action, right? Versus words. Yeah. Thoughts versus feeling maybe. Or no, no, that's not true because stand-up is also very fueled by feeling. and. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, that you would be like a little more, maybe, well... A lot of our confidence in this world and messaging we've received growing up comes from our looks, from our mm -hmm. and having that tied to our worth. Yes. So if you're confident in that way and you're getting that confidence by your words getting railed, then, <laughs> then you can be like, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm winning. Yeah. Also, I'm sorry, but a man in the audience can who's watching porn cannot, regardless of how good the editing is, but yeah, every single man will make fun of me for trying to be funny. Right, exactly. It's like they'll, at the end of the day, they'll still, you know, consume the content and basically shut the fuck up about it. But <laughs> we're speaking. Like yeah. girls that were getting fucked online are now speaking and yeah. using that to replace their income from getting fucked online. Yeah. So people are very tight with us <laughs> about everything. That's and like, interesting. And we're tight with ourselves about it too, mm -hmm. I think. And to look back and be like, you know, I was like telling this really slutty story of our uh, an episode that's coming out next week and I was like you know what I don't think I need to put that out there I think that was me processing something in real time and I don't need to like share that and with the world and you're in control of saying that like because yes. you don't have to mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a good example for me in that realm um oh honestly I was just on the phone with my mom the other day <laughs> and I was like about to say either something about Adam my boyfriend or even about something with my doctor and I had to go, I actually don't need to tell her that. Right. Because I know I'm not going to like the answer. Yeah. It's going to be, my mom loves me. And yeah. the things that bother me are things that shouldn't, you know, like, oh, God, well, just make sure you're going to stay. Are you going to be in before eight? It's like. <laughs> 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 but but I go, I, why would I? I don't need to say that. Mm -hmm. But similarly, like the, you don't have, it was a lesson I learned probably closer to your age, which is. I actually don't have to tell everything. The compulsive mm -hmm. oversharer. Yeah. yeah. I actually don't have to answer that. Or even mm -hmm. like on a stand-up show, hey, can we get your portrait? And you're sitting there. I was having this funny conversation about this with Amy Miller. Um, but the camera person, would, a photographer, like, okay, be silly. Now you're a clown. You're a construction worker. Oh, your mom just died. And, you know, <laughs> oh. I mean, you're <laughs> supposed to be like, mm, and you're letting them <laughs> take these photos of you that they can just put online. Right. And I watched Amy Miller do it. And he was like, do this, do that. And she was like. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, oh yeah, you can ignore them. Not listen right. to what people tell you to do. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think too, like find you're at the um disadvantage of figuring out your stand-up and finding your voice um in the public eye, mm -hmm. which is like a bummer and not really fair because it does, in my opinion, take a long time to get good at stand-up, to find your voice, to to figure those things out. And there's a lot of year I call it like year three jokes. 
<laughs> you know, like you'll hear it again and again. And you think it might be yours, but it's definitely not yours. You know, like mm. a class, this is a classic stereotypical one that you would hear a lot coming up, which is just like a woman being like, I know I've gained weight because black dudes started hitting on me. Oh. And it's sort of like, <laughs> you know, or like battered women sounds delicious. Like there's certain <laughs> things that God damn it. you think like these people are like, this is a real gem. And you're like, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> you're a hack. You know, <laughs> um, but a simple Google, maybe sometimes if you're unsure, will do. Mm -hmm. um, also, maybe <laughs> if you're talking about dismembering women. Yeah. Keep it to yourself. Keep it. Write it down. Keep it your right girl. in your tub. And stay inside your house. <laughs> Please. Tell it to the police, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> Turn yourself Please. in. Please. Immediately. It, that, that's crazy. You want my nine, number? It's 911. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. That's an Ace Ventura quote. <laughs> um, that wasn't you? <laughs> yeah. No, so, Okay. Basically, are you guys? Because I remember early days, I would be like, "I'm going to put this set online," <laughs> um, but I'm scared people will take my material. And then, of course, yeah, retrospect, I'm like, "Oh, honey, <laughs> nobody's <laughs> taking that garbage." They didn't want. Yeah, it. they didn't want <laughs> it at all. So yeah, I mean, I have the I have the um, privilege of not having my old stuff out there for the most part. I mean, congratulations. The set is how freeing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so that's what you guys are getting some negative feedback on. You you mean? Like some of your stand-up clips, or, or is it more podcast-related? Um, I feel like the podcast is mainly self-inflicted criticism. We have both posted like little clips of like from open mic. We're filming each other, yeah. You know, and a lot of comments of "Where's the punchline?" Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. A lot of comments of like "Go back to porn." Yeah, uh -huh. and a lot of those type things, and it's like, well, you know. Godzilla forty two sixty nine zero zero zero. Yeah. <laughs> are you getting on stage? Why are you giving me I advice know, in the my, comments? Speaking of my mom, she has in the past like gone into the comments and and um, oh, thrown down for me. Warrior, but it's like sweet stuff. It'll be like you'll never be as brave as her to go on stage <gasps> and share right. yourself with the crowd. You know what I mean? <laughs> what an angel! But so wow. you guys are not just because I'm getting to know you. I mean, I you know we're familiar with each other, internet wise, but. You guys have aren't interested and won't be kind of going back to the adult entertainment. You know what? I, you, I mean, not in time, forever, but but you, I'm like the re there's there was no a reason going back. you stepped away. Yes. I feel like we're only no, going yeah. forward. There's big we're reasons only why going we forward. Yeah, I just listened. Away. I just read the book Porn Work actually. Oh, um, and so I can imagine some of the reasons, but but I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. it was not the space for us, and we learned that by doing it. Yep, mm -hmm. and I'm grateful for the money, and I'm moving on. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. too, you have to, I guess, continually educate. I mean, I felt I've experienced that a little bit, like uh, um, just something in your past that people will continually ask you about. Oh, for sure, for sure. And it's, and you know what? Sometimes That's you have to set those boundaries fucking, before an interview. Yeah. You just say, "Hey," and actually, mm. I'm not going to talk about that mm. Um, mm -hmm. because you know some people are unfortunately a little less self aware, like to be like. So where you were, you know, they, they kind of want to get that yeah. from me right away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I anticipate that in a lot of ways in the future. And uh -huh. I'm just like, at this point in time, I'm like, you know what? My shadow self took over for a while and I let her take the reins. And I'm not ashamed of that. And I love all the things I learned from it. And it was really hard. And I'm honestly like the person I am because of it. Yeah. 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 I mean, we have already, <laughs> already started getting comments of like, oh, wow, you guys are going to go into porn and get a and get notoriety in a platform from porn and then go against it and then try to and it's like first of all no one has ever recognized me from from porn like yeah. uh, when I get recognized from people it's from the podcast thank you we love you, you and listeners. it's it's never like oh I know you from Pornhub right. I've never have you ever experienced that and I, I've been recognized very rarely from porn and when I am I'm concerned about the person recognizing me yeah. <laughs> right. I'm like how deep most of them you don't say anything go? yeah and they're like yeah. <laughs> right. Just kind of looking. Yeah, they but now we might get... just be looking because you're attractive. You know. Thank you. Checking you. Out. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We've been getting There's called much... like. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. It, yeah, people just been calling us like D-list porn stars lately, and I'm like, that's not the insult you think it is. Right. I'm very I... okay with <laughs> right. that. For right. the record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Because the I... shit we would have had to done to be C, B, or A is not worth it. Yeah. I mean, I think there's just, there's a lot of overlap in general in many mm -hmm. entertainment industries. My, one of my best friends, Indeed. Monica Martin, is an amazing singer. She's in the music industry. It's like, we we deal with similar things and problems. And like, even just what we were talking about, 
uh, paying for PR or yeah. what, what, what you're choosing to do or it's how like, much yeah. of yourself you want to sacrifice yes. to get something. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, you get the record deal, but then here's what they want from you and you don't want to do those things. Yes. Mm -hmm. The combination of money and talent. Yeah. Yeah. Makes for a weird little Venn diagram. <laughs> and there's a bit, there's a lot of similarities between stand-up comedians and porn stars. And one I was thinking about during this interview is how a lot of people will ask about trauma or like assume that you're funny because of trauma or assume that you're in porn because of trauma. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, like may maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but it's not, would I be funny without it? Would I have done porn without it? Who knows? Probably. But, yeah. but that's not the point. Yeah. You know, we're here to like express ourselves in this in this way. I don't know. Do you guys think that people can be funny without any trauma? I also, does anyone have no. no trauma? I don't. I know. I wonder if there are certainly people who have like there's I don't know if I should say this, but in the past I've certainly said <laughs> 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 that, you know, this is a generalization. Uh, you know, <laughs> the trauma of a male compete co the trauma of a male comedian is like my dad left <laughs> and the trauma of a female comedian is like i got raped on camera you know what i mean so it's sort of like our another we, similarity we, yeah i'm just sort of like it does feel like often there are levels to people's and how seriously they take it and how much they let it affect them and like, healing from those things is a multi-pronged approach. Mm -hmm. Like there's always going to be different ways for you to walk through it, get to the other side, manage it. And there's upkeep involved in it. Like yeah. you don't just solve it yeah. and move on and walk away. It's like a garden that you have to weed. And sometimes mm -hmm. that'll like creep up on you and your leg will get caught and you trip. Yeah. So it's like, I think there's a lot to unpack with sexuality, porn, being a woman, growing up with all the messaging, and power. There's just so – because I, I I have, like, probably I, – I was going to put it in my last special. It just wasn't ready. And I'm still tinkering with it. But I do have probably about 10, 15 minutes on porn in this mm. next hour um, because my ex was addicted to it. And oh it really God. affected our intimacy. Wow. Why do we have to wrap up soon? This is so I know. So we're just good. getting into the juice because, yeah, porn addiction is so real. Yeah. Yeah, so real. And I've and you know I actually had a wonderful um um what do you call it performer porn performer mm -hmm. yeah come up to me after a show I did in Louisville and they were just it was nice to sort of chat after because mm -hmm. they you know it would I guess it's nice because it was complimentary you know because <laughs> I do take great care I don't just <laughs> want to like I don't want to be um you know. Like throwing people under the bus. A feminist, like anti-porn feminist. Like that's yeah. my goal. Mm. I'd like to see it from multiple perspectives. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to talk with them and hear that they enjoyed it. And they also sort of confirmed my hot take on lube. and <laughs> Which is? Which, my, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, we're missing a Best Supporting Actor Award in the, in the Porn Awards <laughs> and it goes to lube. Uh, <laughs> the, jo the joke is along the lines of... <laughs> If you're like I'm, I'm personally not a lube head. Uh, obviously, Same. it has its time and place for sure. Even like, uh, yeah, t ha time and place. I guess my take on it is like, if you are pitching me lube off jump, right? You're essentially being like, can I give you a vaginal ultrasound? Because <laughs> it, the joke is like, <laughs> pitching me lube off jump is like lip syncing as the musical guest on SNL. <laughs> Like, why'd you take the gig? Just right. warm up or be talented. <laughs> like, <laughs> commit yourself to using naturally sourced lube. Like, that can right. only be mined through pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so, bro. yeah, we talked about that afterwards. And we talked about lots of things, actually. Mm -hmm. But um, there is so much to unpack around it. Because, yeah, we probably – we just we don't have time. But, I know. Like, I, I mean – you guys are in charge. I sorry, I, I talked way too much about stand up at the beginning. But anyway, Please. there is just a lot to understand to piece through it for yourself. That's why I read so much because I, I'm trying to learn so I don't make a misinformed hot take that's not helpful. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. like I just things that are close to you, you care about. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think when I was saying I get, I used to get irritated, you know, 15 years ago about those dumb more exhibition jokes. I don't feel that way anymore. Mm -hmm. Things still get a little to me, like 
maybe five years ago, whatever it was, if somebody's like, what's the deal with me too? I love getting choked. And it's like, oh, ma'am, <laughs> that's not what it's about. Right? <laughs> it's not about that. And that's not helping. I call it that's not helping comedy. Um, but Wow. You read books on the topics you're about to make jokes about. Can you imagine if men did that? <laughs> can you, you imagine? imagine? <laughs> that is just, thank you. Yeah. Doing the Lord's work. Seriously. Really. Yeah. Check out all the angles. You can make <laughs> yeah. Joke. Well, God damn, it's I'm, been a treat. I'm pissed. So it's I'm over. I'm pissed. We should have gotten two hours. This is ridiculous. I know. Why didn't we do that? <laughs> we, should, we need a part two. She's busy. She, she'll I'll be come like, back. I can't do she two hours. time. You come back? <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Prepare. <laughs> We'll do That's it. even better than you coming here. That means you had a good time. <laughs> yeah, I'll totally come back. Um, <sighs> will you let the people know where to find you and plug anything you want to plug? Yes. Okay. Including I have a little fall <laughs> tour coming up and plug what? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have butt plugs on my website. Uh, oh, I did bring you guys gifts. <gasps> Sterling <gasps> Stelling. <gasps> Wait, what? I did. I forgot. Presents. No one has ever done this before. Oh um, <gasps> wow! This is my merch. Oh, oh my god! I'm gonna oh rep this god. daily. These socks are gonna look like shit after a week. Oh, they're gonna be black. My. Available on my website, BethStellings.com. Look, look at this. I have I'm a tour a coming up She's in the fall. Them on right now, I'll hit a bunch of, of cities. Mm. Uh, my Netflix special is out now. It's called "If You Didn't Want Me Then," directed by my best friend Mo Welch, and um, I have a half hour on there too. I have an HBO special called "Girl Daddy." I think that's enough. Wow, you gorgeous genius. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course. I know. Thanks what a treat. Me. Such an honor. And God. thank you so much. Yes, we'll, we'll talk more about other things. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Are you sure you want to post that?